How do we do that? Back at your slides. God wants us compassionate. What does he want? Number one, God desires us to seek biblical deliverance for people captivated by enslaving sins around us by telling them the gospel. That's what we read in verse six. Number two, God desires us to seek to feed the needy and hungry around us by showing them Christ's love and compassion. That's in verse seven. Number three, God wants us to seek shelter for the homeless and the unprotected around us by showing Christ's love to them and his compassion. Remember, it, we, we're supposed to be the hands and, and the feet of Christ. Number four, God desires us to seek to never get calloused or indifferent for the oppressed around us by maintaining Christ's love and compassion. That's what we read in, in verse seven. The Lord wants us, look at the next one, number five, to seek to refuse prejudice in any form around us. I mean, we need to, to say all lives matter and we are opposed to prejudice. We will treat others in the way of Christ's love and compassion. Jesus always displayed towards sinners. That's verse nine. Number six, God seeks and desires for us to display Christ's love for the poor, the needy, the outcasts, and the afflicted in society. That is verse 10. So, next slide. How do we apply a biblical worldview, this love and compassion? How do we do that? Look, look up for a second. Let me share just, just a challenge to you. Jesus saved us to live for him in our corner of the world. There is something, there is someone, there, there are a group of people that only I will come in contact with that God wants me to reach. Isn't that amazing to think about? Did you know every morning when I get up, I think about who am I going to, as I walk in the spirit today, who am I going to reflect Christ's love to? One of the things I do is uh, take a track a gospel track, pray over it and say, Lord, who will you make a divine appointment with me to share this with? How can I raise the flag and let someone know that I'm a believer? Uh, even yesterday, Bonnie and I were at an appointment that we had and, and we were sitting there and I could tell both of us, we, we were being polite to the person that, that we were meeting with and they were doing their job really well, but both of us were trying to figure out how we were going to bring Jesus Christ into the conversation. How do we do that? Jesus saved us to live for him in our corner of the world. He called us to become salt and light in the world in which we live. Salt speaks of spreading the healing and life-giving work of the gospel. That's what we're supposed to do. Look back at your slides. So how do we apply this? It says in, in Acts 13.36 that at salvation, each of us were designed by God to impact the world around us. Now look up and go with me to Acts 13 and verse 36. One of my favorite verses. It's the most talked about person in the Bible. Uh, it's David. Do you remember David? Mentioned in 141 chapters of the Bible. Look how God describes David's life. And this is how we should think of our life. Verse 36. David after he had served his own generation by the will of God, fell asleep and was buried with his fathers and saw corruption. Serve God's purpose in his own generation. Do you understand God has a purpose for me in this generation? Part of what I'm doing right now is fulfilling that. He gifted and called me to, to teach his word. Uh, the world got shut down by COVID-19. And so friends taught me how to set up a virtual studio and keep the classes going in East Asia and everywhere else. Back at your slides. At salvation, each of us were designed by God to impact the world around us. Next slide. Salt speaks of us spreading the healing, life-giving work of the gospel. You should tell people about Christ. You should buy some tracts and share them. Light speaks of us shining Christ by the way we live. He is the way, the truth, and the life in this world of darkness, and we follow him. We are supposed to live the rest of our lives serving God. What does it look like? Well, Think about the pattern. The early believers were known for their love, patience, endurance, and compassion. What did the early believers do? If you read history, church history, they rescued orphans. They took in the helpless. They fed and clothed the needy. Wherever they lived, life was better around them. Next slide. They were different. 
Did you know that's one of the things we can do? Just be different by being hopeful, by being joyful. They were real people. They struggled through life like everyone else, but they had a contagious hope. How did they have that contagious hope? Well, compassionate people just reflect Christ's compassion. How can we do that? In this sin-parched world, we are supposed to be overflowing with the Spirit of God as he generates streams of living water within us. It doesn't come unless we deny ourselves. That's what the fasting is. In this sin-darkened world, we're supposed to reflect the light of the world who lives within us. It doesn't happen if everything else is on the same shelf. In this sin-cursed world and starving world, we're to share the bread of life with all around us. He lives within us. So God promises 10 blessings to his followers. Now, take your Bibles again. Look at chapter 58. And before we go, uh, we just have a couple of minutes in this class period left. But Isaiah 58, let me read to you again the blessings. The blessings of what? The blessings of denying ourselves, the den blessings of seeking God, the blessings of learning to fast. And people always ask me, can you give us a diet? This is not about dieting. It's not about weight loss. It's not for your cholesterol. This is denying myself. I deny myself coffee. I deny myself being online. I deny myself. There's many ways you can fast. It's just whatever is denying yourself. But here are the blessings that come. Starting in, in verse 8, your light will break forth like morning. Our darkness is lighted. Your healing will spring forth. Our bodies are strengthened. Your righteousness shall go before you. Righteousness overflows in our life. People, I've had people say, could, could you explain to me why you act like, I mean, Bonnie and I, we've had people walk up to our table and say, we saw you, you just had peacefulness. Could you tell us why? The Lord blesses. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Uh, our lives are overshadowed by his protection. Um, all, you can just read the rest of this. So look at your slides. God promises 10 blessings. Read all the way through verse 12. It only comes to those following him. So each of these blessings are just a reflection of Christ living in us of Christ shining through us, of Christ flowing out of us. It isn't us. It's never about us. The question is, is Christ reflecting his love through you? Next slide. That's how we can most reflect Christ. How can we most reflect Christ to our world? Look up. That's our lesson. That's our challenge. It's by inviting Christ's compassion.